Now I'll show you the process of creating a user script. There are many extensions you can download, such as Tamper Monkey, Grease Monkey, Violent Monkey, and others that will allow you to add user scripts to your browser. The extension I'll be showing you how to use is Tamper Monkey. You can install it by going to tampermonkey.net. You'll see that there are many different browser options for Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Safari, Firefox, Opera, Dolphin, and UC. I'm using Chrome, so I'll click this download button. Then click the button to add it to your browser. When it's finished installing, you'll see a new tab pop up. And the extension will be added over here. I can click create a new script to get started. I'll be creating a user script for xkcd.com. So I'll go to xkcd.com and copy the URL into the match field. Now if I want to match all subdirectories such as xkcd.com slash 327, I can put a star here to match all subdirectories. Now if I want to match any protocol like HTTP or HTTPS, I can replace this with a star and it'll match both. Also, if I wanted to match subdomains, like something.xkcd.com, I can put a star dot before xkcd, and it'll match those as well. Now I can name the user script by typing the name over here. I'll call xkcd title. The description I could put over here. I'll say display the title of XKCD comics below the comic. I can set the author to be my name and the rest of these fields I will leave alone. Now one thing about XKCD comics is that it has title text for every image to read additional content after you read the comic. For example, in this comic, to see the title text you have to hover over the image and it will display it. The script I wanted to write will display the title text below the image so they don't have to hover over it to read it. The first thing I want to do in the script is add an event listener for when the page loads. This way I'll be able to access elements on the page in the JavaScript. To do this I will say window dot add event listener and then the first parameter will be load. That will detect loading of the page. Now the second parameter will be a function which I wanted to run, and the third parameter will be false. Now the first thing I need to do in this function is get the title. I'll need to go to XKCD to figure out how to do that. I can right click on an element and click inspect, and you can see over here there's an element that has the title over here as the title attribute. It's inside of an image tag, that's inside of a div that has an ID of comic. So if I want to select this, I can say document.querySelector and I can say pound sign comic to refer to an element that has an ID of comic. And inside I want an element that has an attribute title. This title in square brackets makes sure that it's an element that has a title attribute which could be an animation or an image or an interactive element. If we run this, it will return this image which has the title attribute. We can access the title attribute by saying dot title and it will just return the text. So I'll copy this into our program. I will say const title element equals document.querySelector comic title. Now we need to make sure that this title element exists because sometimes there might be an, a comic that does not have a title text. So if we say if title element, it will tell us whether we have a title element on the page or not. Now inside of here, we can run the rest of the code. We can say const title equals title element dot title. You can only access the title of the title element if the title element exists 
So we're running it inside of this condition. Now we want to create a paragraph. To do that, we can say document dot create element and send it p as the parameter. This will make a paragraph. Now to use it, we'll have to assign this to a variable. We'll say let p equals document dot create element p, and then set the inner text of p to be the title. Now what's left is to display on the page. To do that, we can say document dot query selector to find the comic element and use dot append to add the paragraph to the page at the end of the comic. The reason we don't need to check this time if this exists is because we already know it exists by the fact that we found a title element. Now if I save this and reload the page you'll see that now there's a paragraph here that was not there before. This paragraph contains the text of the title text that you see when you hover over the comic. Let's say I want this to stand out more or modify the styling. I can right click and do inspect and I can play around with styles over here and then I'll copy them into the JavaScript code later. One thing I want to do is get rid of the all uppercase font style. You can see that the font variant is small caps on the body. So in this element, we want to set the font variant to be none. That will remove that styling. Next thing I want to do is add a background color. I will set the background to be AAA AAA. So I'll add a light gray background to it. We need some padding around the edges. So I'll say padding 15 pixels. And now you can see it looks good on many screen sizes, but if it gets too small, it will start cutting off. We can fix that by adding max width of 100 viewport width and center on the page with margin auto. Now we'll display only up to the size of the screen. To use these styles in our JavaScript, we can copy these and we want to apply all of these to the paragraph. We could say p.style.fontvariant equals none and do that for each style we want to apply. There's a simpler way which is to create an object of all the styles and apply them all at once. So I'll create a new styles variable that will be equal to an object which has keys and values. The keys will be the CSS properties I want to modify and the values will be the values that I want to apply to the properties. So I'll paste these here. In JavaScript we can't use the hyphen because that means minus. So instead JavaScript CSS properties have both words combined by making the second word capitalized. Also the attributes need to be in strings, so we will put these all in quotes. And one more thing is that we don't want semicolons to separate pairs in this object. We want to use commas, so we'll replace these semicolons with commas. And the last one we can leave off since it's the last one in the object. Now to apply these styles to the paragraph, we will use the object prototype function, object.assign. The first parameter will be the object we want to apply them to, which will be p.style. And then the styles we want to apply is the second parameter. Now if we save this, and reload the page, we still have our styling. If we go to another page, we will also have this title paragraph with the same styling. I hope this introduction to user scripts is useful. I hope that now you can create your own user scripts to customize the web. I'll be putting the source code of this user script in the description so you can copy it and learn from it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content just like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!